I'm Devin Dion with Lights in the City. We're here at the meet and greet for the play when no one's listening. Stay tuned to catch exclusive details. Lights in the City, I'm here live with Miss Essence. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Could you give me a little details about your character you're playing? Yes. So I play Miss May, who is the grandmother of the main character, Jasmine, and she is the spiritual kind of head of the family, um, but she's also don't take no mess um, type of person, so yeah. Do you feel like you can relate to your character? I can. Um, both of my grandmothers died, were gone by the time I was 14, but I had a lot of spiritual guidance. Um, was a lot of spiritual grandmothers, a lot of spiritual mothers. You know, I still had a lot of my great aunts around. So in a lot of ways, they were that grandmother figure in my life. I'm not saying that you're a grandma, because I see you got style, uh -huh. but you have that motherly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I try to, you know, I come across as motherly. Being a former youth pastor, it's just kind of natural. And so when I meet kids, when I see kids, you know, I treat them as if, you know, I want somebody to treat me or treat my child, who is kind of that, a part of that village to help raise them. I would say this play came at not, it couldn't have come at a better time. We need people to listen, especially to the youth. If you could give one message to someone under you, what would it be? Um, the message I would give is don't be afraid to talk to somebody. Um, as teenagers, I get it. We want to hold everything in. We want to bottle our emotions because we don't know who we can trust. And you know that one mentor may seem too close to our parents, but don't be afraid to talk to someone. If you can't talk to your parent, find that mentor, find that you know figure in your life, whether it be a teacher, a youth pastor, youth minister, whoever the deacon at your church, or even Mr. Mr. John down the street, you know, whoever it is, but feel free to talk and really tell somebody how you feel because they may be able to offer help that you know you may not realize was there all right thank you so much you have it here when no one's listening there is someone that's willing to find that person i'm here with wesley he plays the character rodney in the play when no one's listening how are you today i'm good how you doing i'm wonderful could you tell me how did you learn about the role the opening spot uh, when well, my wife um, found uh, Mrs. Hills uh, on Facebook, she found out that she was auditioning for the role, uh, different roles and characters. So I came in, auditioned, and uh, the rest is history, and I couldn't be more excited and elated to be a part of this production. Is this your first role in the play? Oh, uh, it's not. I've actually been doing, uh, traveling, doing plays for the last year and a half. Um, so. This is not my first time, but this is my first time with Overflow Productions, and um, it, it has been nothing short of amazing. Other than acting, do you have any other hidden talents? Um, well, I sing, uh, which you all will see in the play. So um, I hope everyone comes out and, and enjoy it. I, I hope I'm able to please them. <laughs> I'm sure you will. And um, could you tell me a little bit about your character and how do you relate to your character? Well, I play Rodney. Uh, I'm Taylor's best friend. Um, and I can definitely relate to um, the role. Rodney is a guy who's, he's very headstrong. I would say out of all of the, the uh, students, um, he's probably one of the more mature ones. Uh, he wants the best for Taylor, uh, and, and I can definitely relate uh, coming up in high school. Uh, you know, I definitely had a best friend who, who you know, I was very close to, and uh, so I can relate to, to Rodney a lot, and uh, I think a lot of other people will as well. All right, and for those who wants to get in touch with you, who want to get in touch with you to put you in another spotlight, could you give your social media? Um, Facebook, Instagram. Ed Webb Terry, this W E B B T E R R Y, straight up, no spaces. Uh, this Ed Webb Terry. Yep. All right, thank you. I'm here with Shamia. She plays the character of Ramona in the play When No One's Listening. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. All right. Can you tell me a little about Ramona? Yes, actually Ramona is a deceased loved one um, that's actually the sister of Jasmine, which is one of the main characters. She had taken her own life, um, and so she pretty much 
bridges all the gaps in the play near the end by saying why she did what she did. So it's like um, she's a reoccurring ghost, would you say? Yes, yes. She, she is a ghost and she comes in and intervenes um, through a really strong spiritual warfare that's coming against the main character, Jasmine. And so Ramona comes and intervenes and explains and answers a lot of questions that she may have, especially the one of why did she take her life? Yeah. So would you say the um, you in real life versus the character you're playing in the play is similar? Um, actually, I would say yes. Um, as a teenager, I did experience sexual abuse myself as the character did. And I went through those struggles mentally as well. Um, and so thank God that I overcome that. Um, but the character did not um, overcome that circumstance, overwhelmed her, and it resulted to her taking her life. And last but not least, do you have any words of encouragement for young women out there? Absolutely. Um, especially when it comes to um, not telling someone. The character says in the play that um, her father told her not to say anything, that she was the hero, she didn't want to hurt the family, and all of those are lies from Satan. Reach out and talk to somebody um, about what's going on with you, and, and don't, let it, don't let it linger. Don't, don't keep that secret. Um, it literally will eat you alive, but there are some people out there that you can trust, and so please get help. Thank you. Keep God in your life and speak up. I'm here with Justin Pugh. He plays the character Eric. How are you? I'm doing fine. Uh, could you give me a background information on the character? Well, Eric, he's somewhat a little bit nerdy slash educated, and he just wants somebody to listen to him for once. Do you feel like the character is somewhat similar in comparison to your actual personality? To be honest, yes. Do you feel like um, when they cast you, did they do it based on knowing you or it was just you just got out there and tried, you just auditioned? Um, I think they cast me because I was, I, I was talented. I, don't, I, I'm not, I, think I, did, I think I did a good job in the audition, yeah. And you just found out about it on uh, social media or word of mouth? Well, actually, Miss Natasha Clay, she contacted me herself, and she told me to come in, and I came in, auditioned, and a few days later, she texted me, she told me that I had the part. All right, and is this your first time starring in such a big event? No, ma'am. This was, this is actually my sixth stage play that I have done. All right, and how can the people keep in contact with you, social media? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Periscope. Facebook name, Justin Pugh. Instagram name is um, jrock underscore the actor, jrock underscore my fan page, and my Twitter is jrock underscore the best actor. All right, y'all go follow jrock the actor. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome back to Lights in the City. I'm Devin Dion, and I'm here with two talented young stars. First, let me introduce y'all. What's your name? My name is Chase Garrison. And yours? My name is Alexis Harris. All right, is this your first time acting? Yes, it is. So it's me. How did y'all hear about the role in the play? Well, see, I want to give a shout out to my TT Angelo. 
Woohoo! But um, yeah, she's the one that got me into this play, so I thank her for that. And how did you get a chance to star in this play as well? My mom. Uh, yeah, she told me about it, so I just want to get in and see how it feels. And what's the name of your character in the play? My character is Kevin. And what would you like another young up-and-coming actor to know? Um, not to be nervous, to get out there and act in front of a whole crowd. Um, I would like them to know that if you're scared, just get out there and do it and face your fears. That's all. I like that, face your fears. Do you have any input that you would like to uh, share with the young ladies out there that's interested in doing the same thing you're doing? Sure, um, don't be afraid. It's just like in front of a cast that will support you and everything you do, all they're gonna do is clap. Just feel the moment, get into the character and just, you know, do what you gotta do. You have it here, have a passion for what you do. I'm here with Tracy, and she plays Elaine, the mother, correct? That is correct. All right. How would you say you relate to your character? Uh, the most relatable thing for me is the fact that I'm a single mother raising a child. I work really, really hard, and I invest a lot financially into my daughter. So that's probably the only thing that I find personally relatable in, as, as that goes. And what's a special message from the play you think people should take home after seeing this? As a parent, I think the special message would be to pay attention to your children, that it takes more than finances for your children. The best investment that you can get for a child is yourself. The other special message would be that molestation and abuse is a very real factor in the black community. It's not something to be whispered about. It's something that needs to be discussed at the kitchen table, and it needs to be dealt with. And say if I was your daughter, what would be something you would tell me to help me move on after such a tragic event? I would honestly sit down and tell you to be honest and tell me whatever it is you were feeling. Let you know that if I'm unable to give you everything that you need, I would let you know that there were other resources for you and I would just be with you every step of the way and absolutely make sure that whatever you needed, you got. And I would show that I was there for you. That would pretty much be it. All right, thank you. Thank you. I have the pleasure of being joined with James. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. How did you find out about this play? Um, well, I'm originally with an organization called Heal the Hood Foundation of Memphis. And so Ms. Natasha Hill works with Heal the Hood. So that's how I found out. You know, she called me to audition. So that's what I did. And I got the part. And what is your character's role? Um, my character's name is Martin. And I am the co-signer of the main character, which is Rodney. I can tell you relate to him because oh, no, I don't no, know. No, <laughs> no, no. I, I don't relate at all. I'm not a co signer. You're just a good character. Yeah, you pretty can play much. that role. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what is a message that you gain from the play? Um, just if you're having any problems, just please reach out to somebody before it happens. You know, anything worse happens, you know, because you never know what can happen and you know God has a plan for you so don't end your life don't do any stupid decisions just you know tell somebody and to keep giving positive vibes and helping the community stay positive mm -hmm. how would you help besides heal the hood um really just you know because you know the black lives matter things happening right now so I, there's this one quote that I love so much, and it's called, you know, it says, we can't change the world unless we change ourselves. So we have to change ourselves in order to have a better outcome. I like that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm here with Amaya. She plays the role of Tanisha in the play When No One's Listening. Hello, how are you? I'm doing fine. And what are some... Um, personality traits of your character you're playing? She's kind of cool. She laid back. Like, she's friends with everybody no matter what's going on. Like, she really chill. So Tanisha is what's popping? Yeah, she was popping. Would you say Amaya and Tanisha can relate? Yeah, we can relate because I'm cool with anybody no matter what the situation is going on. Like, if you rock with me, I rock with you. Yeah. So, let me know how Tanisha would be as my friend. I'm going to give you a scenario, and I want you to give me the best advice as Tanisha. 
You ready? All right, all right. All right, I just um, found out that my mom doesn't believe me when I spoke out on being abused by her boyfriend. And what would you say to me as Tanisha? I would tell you, you know, just kind of just talk to her more. Like, if she's not listening, find out any way you can just to, Mom, I got something to tell you, I already got to tell you this. You know, convince her to listen to you. Like, just really just try your hard so she can just really listen to you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Nikki. She plays the character Miss Waters. Yeah. All right. Are there any surprises we can look forward to? Um, there are, but I don't want to give them away. So you're going to have to purchase a ticket and come to the show to see the surprises. July 16th. <laughs> Get your surprise on there. Yes. <laughs> and what did you? What could you say you gained from being a part of such an amazing play? What I gained from it is learning that children have a voice. Because a lot of times adults get so wrapped up in their jobs and their own personal lives and things that they have going on that they don't really take time to listen and talk to their kids. All right. And would you say that um, this is a play for young and older people or just parents or it can relate everybody can relate to the message definitely it's a play for parents teachers students mothers fathers daughters i mean everybody can experience something and learn something and relate to something that has happened in this production and last but not least did you what was a strong line from the play that will be stuck with you um when you've done something wrong before you get upset or lash out, take a step back and think about what you could have done differently to produce a different outcome. I like that. I'm going to definitely use that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm here with the mastermind behind the play when no one is listening. How are you, Natasha? I'm fine. How are you? I'm wonderful. Could you tell me where did you find inspiration to even have this play going on? From the Holy Ghost. You know, I believe that, you know, when you pray, the Lord speaks. And when you listen, you end up with great productions like when no one is listening. So nothing in the world um, inspired you. It was just God speaking to you. Well, of course the world. I mean, you look around and you see all the things that are going on with our youth today. A lot of it is because they're angry. A lot of it is because they feel like no one is listening to their voice. So I um, prayed about it. And you know, God gave me this production when no one is listening. And it's really to help people to just look within yourself and see it may, your, your relationship with your child may be perfect, but you may see a neighbor or a cousin or an uncle or aunt or somebody else that's suffering in their relationship with their child and you can actually give them some advice. Because sometimes I won't take it from you. If you're my sister and your relationship with your child is perfect and I'm struggling with mine, I may not take that from you, but I may go to a production and look and see it acted out on stage and, and can still reap the benefits. What's some advice for the young people out there um, to get them to listen and to channel their frustrations into something positive? What would you say to them? Well, I would say to them, first know that you are special. First know that you have a voice and that you matter. And if you can't find anyone in your immediate home that will listen to you, there are school counselors, there are pastors, there are teachers, there are different leaders that will take up that time, that will listen to you. Um, because there are a lot of leaders out there that they, they see children and they see that they have great potential. And a lot of times the only thing that child needs is someone that will nurture that potential. So it's just good to, you know, be on the lookout for those kind of people and even just pray about it and, and listen to people that are around you because sometimes it's the little things that people can say to you that will make you think, hmm, Mr. So-and-so said this, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to have a conversation with him and see what he was saying and that could lead to other things. Besides when no one is listening, July 16th, y'all check it out. Do you have anything else up and coming? No, not at the moment. We're actually in the process of writing another production, and the plan is to do it later um, towards the end of the year. And could you spill some tea on that? What is it about? What's the next topic? Uh, it's heavy. The next topic is who dropped you? And it's based on the biblical story 
of Mephibosheth, I think that's how you say the name, but his nurse dropped him as a child when the, 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 the palace was attacked and the nurse was running and she dropped him. And as a result of that, he became crippled. So all throughout his life, he was down there in Lodabar, down there with the low lowlifes, down there with the people who didn't have anything, because, because of his handicap, he limited himself. He wouldn't allow himself to think outside his situation. So I'm, I'm sure many of you know the story, but later on, the King David, he said, he asked, was there anyone left of the house of Saul? And they said, yeah, there's a cripple down there in Lodabar. And he said, go and get him and bring him to me. So he brought him to him to sit at the king's table, and he restored him all the riches and everything that was in his heritage. He restored everything to him. So the moral of the story is, who dropped you? What is that handicap that you have that's preventing you from going forward in life? Did other, were you slim when you grew up, and other kids made fun of you, so they made you feel like you wasn't attractive or you couldn't be a model when you used to aspire to be one, but because they made fun of you, that's a handicap. It's a mental handicap. Who dropped you? You know, was it that that um, family member that molested you, so therefore you can't trust people, you can't get in a healthy relationship because you were dropped when you were molested or you were raped. So that's, like I said, it's a pretty heavy topic. Um, a lot of people, we deal with issues in life because something happened, somebody that we trusted, somebody that we depended on, they dropped us. That's very heavy, and you got me, you're pulling me in with the topic, you're pulling me in. How to um, keep in touch with you, how can we keep following the great things you're doing? Well, we're on uh, Facebook, of course, Overflow Productions, and I'm on Facebook, Natasha Clay Hill, and then we have a website, Ova, O-V-A, flowproductions.com. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in with Lights in the City. Be sure to check us out on www.l3television.com. Be sure to keep in touch with Natasha Clay Hill and the many great projects she has going on. And check us out on Sundays at 5.